Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about gravity and we're going to be looking at the HL extension topic, some of the equations you get in HL physics to add on to what we've done with lug. We're going to be talking about some things called gravitational potential and more. Okay, the first question we have to ask ourselves once we start thinking about things off the surface of the planet Earth is where, how would we do potential energy? Remember when we do potential energy, we can often do MGH, where we just have some arbitrary height, uh, you know, up above whatever we define to be zero. There's a couple issues with that, though. If we want to find, like, the potential energy of, say, a satellite orbiting the planet. Number one, how do we define H? Where's our zero? What then if we have a satellite orbiting Mars or something? Is H relative to the Earth's surface or Mars's surface or something else? The other issue is... G, little g, is not a constant when we leave the surface of the Earth. Little g is like a function of uh, how far away we are and how big the thing making the g field is. So we have an equation to deal with this, and we have a way to deal with this. Here's sort of an idea of what, how we can picture this. Um, we're kind of going to do it what might seem like a little bit backwards, but it turns out the one universal zero that we can always make zero potential energy no matter whether you're on the earth or the moon or an asteroid or the black hole at the center of our galaxy is we can say far 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 away let's make that the ground let's make that zero um now the fun thing that this makes happen is that makes potential energy potential energy like near the earth negative it makes potential energy negative everywhere because then as you go higher and higher and higher, you get closer and closer and closer to zero potential energy. But we can picture this with what we call gravity wells. So we're going to picture that potential energy is zero really far away. And uh, this kind of covers it, okay? This is ground level here. So this explains like it's the moon has less gravity. It's got much less mass. The gravity on the moon is weaker. So it'd be much easier, let's say, to climb out of this well and to say launch a rocket from the surface of the moon um, it wouldn't take as much potential energy, let's say, because the G field is weaker, whereas here on the Earth, it would take more energy. So we can still represent the potential energy in like this climate height here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to make this zero. And what this represents, this drawing is not to scale because that represents infinity. Okay, here's the crazy idea. Um, we are going to make potential energy equal to zero at infinity, a distance of infinity, and so that's a you know mathematical definition. And so potential energy must be negative everywhere else. Because imagine you're on the surface of the Earth, you have some potential energy. You lift the thing a little bit higher, it's got more potential energy. And you go higher and higher and higher, further away from the surface of the Earth. And if you get to a distance of infinity, uh, then there you have zero potential energy. So everywhere below must be negative potential energy, which is totally fine. We can have that because we're just defining this kind of reference zero. Um, okay, this equation comes from calculus. You need calculus to derive this equation. So uh, for the IB, we just got to kind of say, here it is. So here it is. Um, if you are a student of calculus and you know how to do an integral, you can check Cognity. They have a derivation of this equation if you're really curious. But they gave it to you in the data book. You don't really need to derive it or anything like that. This is the equation that will tell us the potential energy between two masses when we're not just on the surface of the Earth. So I can have a satellite some distance away from the Earth. This will be the mass of the thing making the field. This is the mass in the field. This is the universal gravitational constant in the front of your data booklet. And R is the distance between the center of both masses. We're treating both our masses as point masses here. And a negative sign shows up. We're going to interpret that as negative, meaning potential energy is zero at infinity. Think about plugging a very, very, very big R in here. And the potential energy would approach zero and it would have negative values everywhere else. This, it, maybe we'll take some practice. It's a little bit of a weird concept, but that's the idea. That's how we're going to do it. And so this will give us potential energy when we can't just do MGH when G is not 9.8. Okay, here's an example. This is just to help you maybe visualize some of these numbers and make a little sense of it because it's going to seem crazy. We have these big negative numbers, but if we think about how they're changing, maybe it's not so bad. So if you have a tennis ball, uh, just hold the tennis ball near the surface of the Earth. If I use this equation, I'm going to plug in 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth times the mass of a tennis ball divided by 
all these distances. So this is one Earth radius. So if we're on the surface, one Earth radius away from the center of the Earth, the tennis ball would have this much potential energy, negative three uh, million joules, really, negative 3,000 kilojoules. Um, so that's a weird number, but think about this. Now, if I go two Earth radii away, now the potential energy is like negative 1,000 kilojoules, negative 1.7 million joules. Uh, it's increasing, right? Here it is on the surface of the Earth. Here it is far away, further away, further away, further away. So potential energy will increase as we get further away from the planet. And it will increase like at a decreasing rate because as you get further away, the G field is weaker. So, you know, going from 7 Earth radii to 8 Earth radii away is really not that much more energy because the field is so much weaker. Whereas going from 2 to 3, you still got a pretty strong field here near the Earth. And so it takes more energy to lift that little bit of distance. Uh, all right, so those are just some conceptual things to help you picture why. And now, here we go. We get 10 million Earth radii away, and now we're getting real close to zero potential energy. All right, so it's this one over R thing. Potential energy will approach zero as we get further and further away. Okay, that's potential energy. Something else exciting, uh, similar to what we do with field strength. Field strength um, is a way we have of sort of abstractly representing what would happen with a gravitational force. We can say the field strength on the surface of the planet is about 10 newtons per kilogram. So I know for every kilogram of mass I put there, I know how much force it will feel. We can do the same thing with potential energy. I could say, yes, a tennis ball at the surface of the Earth has negative 3 million joules of energy. Um, we're going to define something in essentially joules per kilogram. So I could just say at the surface of the Earth, you will get this much potential energy per kilogram of mass. That's the broad definition of what we're going to define, which is called gravitational potential. Okay, vocab, this is um, going to be annoying, but this is a new thing. This is not the same thing as potential energy at all. Potential is a totally different thing than potential energy. Sorry, I didn't make it up. Uh, okay, but here's, here's how we're going to define it. The definition is going to seem wacky, but this is a very mathematical definition. The way we define this officially is gravitational potential. We're going to use a capital V with a G subscript. V is going to be our symbol for potential. Um, and it is defined as the work done per unit mass to bring a small test mass to a point from infinity. Important part of this definition is work per unit mass. You do want to know it all. The IB likes to ask you to define this equation just like they do field strength. It's kind of similar to the field strength equation, but we add this strange bringing a thing from infinity. So I'm imagining how much work it would take if I had a mass infinitely far away at zero potential energy and brought it to this point, how much work I would have to do to place it at that point and stop it, um, which would be a negative amount of work if you think about that. So I take a thing from far away, place it here at x, and here's what the uh, equation would come from then. It would be the work per unit mass. So work over m, little m. So again, just like field strength, we did f over m. I'm dividing away little m, the mass in the field, because we're going to find a value independent of what's in the field. Work, of course, the transfer of energy. Work is change in energy. Here it's a change in potential energy. So we can just to look at where this equation comes from. Find the change in potential energy. It would be final minus initial. So I end up at point x. So I want the potential energy at x minus the potential energy from where I started, which was at infinity. Here's part of why we do this weird definition this way, because the potential energy at infinity is zero. So uh, I can plug in the equation we just came up with for potential energy, divide the little m away. Notice this process is all very similar to how we define field strength. Okay, it's a similar type of thing. And so here's our equation. This is a data booklet equation in topic 10 this new quantity called gravitational potential. We measured in joules per kilogram. That's really how you want to think of it. And it's really kind of this. It's really gravitational potential is basically potential energy per mass, joules per kilogram. If I put something at a certain spot, I can say there's negative 10 million joules per kilogram. So every kilogram of mass I put there has negative 10 million joules of potential energy. That's probably the best way to conceptually think of it. You do want to know this definition. It's very mathematical, but there you go. So this equation will give us gravitational potential. We're going to look at some numbers with it to help make this make a little more sense. Um, one thing to note is gravitational potential is a scalar quantity. So these things, you can add potentials of multiple objects uh, when we get there, 
but they won't add like vectors. They just add like scalars. So there's no direction. There's just for gravity, they'll all be negative numbers. Um, so gravitational potential will all have negative values because of this negative sign. That's the mass of the thing uh, creating the field. That's again how far away we are from the center. And this is that same old, same old wonderful big G constant in the front of the data booklet. Okay. So let's do a couple number things now with that to start wrapping our head around what the heck gravitational potential is. Let's just first use the equation and see what we come up with. Let's do it at the surface of the Earth. I'm going to use this equation. If we plug in the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth here, and divide by radius of the Earth, because remember, that's how far away I am from the center of the Earth when I'm standing on its surface. I'm one Earth radius away. It's about 6,000 kilometers, so I'm making 6,000 times 10 to the 3 meters. We get this, negative 62, 63 million joules per kilogram, or 6.2 times 10 to the 7 joules per kilogram. Okay, here are some numbers to help you start to visualize this stuff. So these are different amounts of potential at different uh, altitudes. So at ground level, we got that same about negative 63 million. All right, they're rounding a little differently here. I think they used uh, six. I think they rounded the mass of the Earth to six or something like that. All right, but, but you know, about negative 63 million joules per kilogram on the surface. That means with this zero potential energy at infinity thing, any amount of mass you put on the surface of the planet will have a potential energy of about negative 63 million joules for every kilogram of mass. And just think about how these numbers are increasing then as we go from really negative up towards zero. All right, so we can plug in all of these different, uh, you know, altitudes. In other words, these are all differences, different distances away from the center of the Earth, and we'll get different potentials at those different distances. In fact, you'll find, uh, of course, because this just depends on R, our radial distance, um, you know, 100 kilometers away from the Earth, that's officially how we often define the edge of space, by the way. You get about negative 61, 62 million joules per kilogram. Um, and everywhere that's 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth has that potential. We have another way to represent these called equipotentials. So we can imagine around something like a planet, there are these concentric circles where the potential is the same all along these lines. So we call them equipotentials because these lines show lines of equal potential, the same potential. So all around here, there's this potential. All around here, there's this potential. That's the idea. Um, we'll get more into these, a lot more into these when we start talking about electric fields. But just to introduce the idea of equipotentials, and the last thing we'll do is we'll practice with one in a second. Uh, one other thing to note, if you can picture the field lines here, remember we would draw those radially in, pointing towards the planet to show which way it would pull something, a mass with gravity. Uh, these will always be perpendicular. These are always perpendicular to lines that would be pointing in. So equipotentials are perpendicular to field lines. Again, that's something we'll do a lot more with when we get into electricity. Okay, let's do an example to help solidify some of these ideas. So let's find potential energy using this potential stuff. So here's one last equation that we'll do for today from the data booklet, which is part of the potential energy equation in the data booklet. Um, this is a simple one. It says potential energy equals mass in the field times potential, gravitational potential. So let's imagine a satellite, a satellite uh, 10,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. I could use this, these numbers. I'm going to find the satellite's potential energy and we compare it to the surface. So really, this just means potential energy per mass. So again, at 10,000 kilometers, you want to think of it as I have negative 24 million joules of potential energy per kilogram of mass. So every kilogram of mass I put up at that altitude has a potential energy relative to infinity of negative 24 million joules. Well, since I have 500 kilograms of mass, I'm just going to multiply. Multiply the mass that I put in the field by the potential at that point, and I find that that satellite has a potential energy of negative 12,000 megajoules. Uh, so, you know, negative 12 billion joules. Whoa. Let's compare that to the surface where the potential is negative 63-ish. If I do that same multiplication, 500 times this number, negative 62.8, and million joules per kilogram, I'll get this, negative 31,400 megajoules. 
So again, these numbers might seem strange, but try and think through them conceptually. At the surface, this satellite, 500 kilogram satellite, has a potential energy of negative 31,000 megajoules. And then when I bring it up far into space, 10,000 kilometers above the surface, it would have a potential energy of negative 12,000 megajoules. That's more. That's what we expect. That's what we're used to. That's not changing. So as I go from here to here, the potential energy definitely increases. Uh, of course, it's just increasing from negatives. So it's negative a lot and negative not as much. And I'm going up towards zero. If I could bring that satellite infinitely far away from the Earth, it would have zero energy, potential energy. Okay, so that's the idea with gravitational potential. It's essentially potential energy per mass. That's really how you want to think of it. Um, all right, you want to know the definition. Uh, we'll do a lot of fun things with the math and that equation, but that's the concept to get us started with this uh, HL stuff of gravitational potential. All right, so we'll pick up there next time. Uh, until then, have fun.